Common oat cultivation and silage. The common oat is an annual herbaceous plant belonging to the family of grasses that has begun to be implemented as an energy supplement in the feeding of dairy livestock in the northern part of the province of Antioquia. Silage is a method for conserving the optimum nutrient level of forage, which is used to supplement the diet of production cattle and thus reduce the need for inputs and lower the production cost for a liter of milk. You can silage any vegetable species. In the case of cattle feed, usually we preserved kikuyo and rye grasses as well as harvested grasses like alfalfa, oats, and also corn. You can also preserve legumes, as is the case with clover leaf. We must become cultivators. Growing more food gives us the possibility of having a greater carrying capacity per hectare on the farm. Another benefit we obtain by growing our own feed on the farm, especially silage, in this case oat silage, is that we can reduce the cost of acquiring feed. For us to produce a kilo of oats, we could be talking between four and six and a half cents in dollars. That depends on the level of efficiency and the technology available in our farms. The conditions that oat needs are basically a good pH. We work in a range between 5 and 8. Besides that, you need good watering conditions, more or less between 60 and 100 millimeters per month. And in areas where we're going to plant oats where we don't have good rainfall, it's necessary to irrigate in order to improve conditions for the oat so it can absorb nutrients from the soil. Oats are highly adaptable. We have begun trials starting at 2200 and up to 3200 meters above sea level. This emulates some specific conditions in the north of Antioquia because we find altitudes more or less within this range. In order to plant common oats, it's important to pick a terrain that meets the water, microbial, and climactic conditions that allow for proper development of the species. Terrain selection and topography are also important for the oat crop, since this will tell us what type of machinery is ideal to prepare the soil. A physical and chemical analysis must be performed in order to analyze the soil's fertility and the availability of nutrients in the soil. After verifying that the land meets all the requirements for growing the crop, we proceed with clearing the topsoil. This consists of eliminating all of the terrain's vegetable cover. This can be done by animals through deliberate overgrazing or with machinery, be it tractors, plows or machetes. After clearing, we must burn off the scrub. This must be done with a chemical whose active ingredient is glyphosate in order to eliminate the remaining vegetable cover. After the burning off of scrub, the soil is tilled. You make two passes with the tractor, the first with a chisel plow. Then you apply the fertilizer according to the result of the fertility analysis of the soil. And lastly, the rotary tiller, with the idea of incorporating the fertilizer and finish preparing the soil for planting. After preparing the soil and incorporating the fertilizer and other improvements, we proceed to planting. Planting is done by scattering the seed, approximately 80 to 100 kilograms of seed per hectare. The planting of oats can also be done manually, although people believe that you can only do silage with large machines, and that is not the case. In this farm, we are showing that it can be done manually.
We can show people how to foster a culture of growing feed on the farm. It's important to highlight that you don't necessarily have to establish a monoculture throughout the cattle ranch. You can select some parcels or some areas of the farm that are accessible that you can irrigate if necessary during the time the crop will be planted. In case there are droughts, you need access to irrigation. Besides that, oats are a transitory crop that is harvested at once and I should sow the crop in an area where I want to replant another type of grass. Among the duties required for this crop are the application of fertilizers, fungicides and insecticides. What we did at this farm specifically was to apply four bags of urea and two of potassium chloride 15 days after the seeds sprout, all of this in order to fulfill the crop's needs. We also apply fertilizers and insecticides. Oats are characterized for having broad, tall and vigorous leaves. At approximately 90 days, we could be talking about from 70 to 110 centimeters from the base level. In addition to that, it has a very good energy composition. The common oat contains approximately 8% to 14% protein. This percentage will depend on the soil's fertilization and on the management of the silage process. Well, the oats that we are growing are of a type called Everleaf, and this variety is resistant to blight. In this area, we see a proliferation of blight because of the high humidity in wintertime. Besides that, this type of oat, as opposed to other varieties, is more productive, yielding 15 to 25 percent more production. <laughs> Oat harvesting can start 90 days from planting, although the idea is to do it between 140 and 160 days. It is at this time that the grain is ripe, or close to flowering. This will indicate a high percentage of proteins and carbohydrates, as well as the highest proportion of leaves and good palatability for the cattle. The harvesting of oats is done through machete or sickle. This should be done 10 centimeters from the topsoil. I should note that with the oat crop, we can reach yields of between 45 and 70 tons of green forage per hectare. 